Hello and welcome to this video where we talk about Grok3 Deep Research and we will compare it to Perplexity Deep Research and we will also look at whether ChatGPT Deep Research for 200 US dollars might be worth it or not. So let's dive right in into some examples here with Grok3. If you want, you can follow along. It is possible to get Grok3 right now in the beta for free, at least for a couple of tries. If you want to fully upgrade and use Grok3, here in Australia, you need to pay $62 per month. It's probably around 40 USD per month for the Premium Plus version, which gives you access to deep research which is really one of the features that I'm mainly interested in because uh, it's very promising from the first results here that I've seen. And compared to ChatGPT's price of their deep research model with 200 US dollars per month, 40 USD versus 200 USD, right? Even if the quality would be slightly less on Grok3, I think there's definitely an argument to be made here that um, for the vast majority of people who use it professionally, 40 USD is absolutely acceptable. Whereas when you get into 200 USD per month, um, it really needs to have like strong use cases. And so let's see here what the use case is of Grok3 Deep Research for SEO purposes. What we've done here is we've taken an existing article about um, breast augmentation see which article it was this one here about risks of breast implants basically and we've asked hey this this article is a little bit short um, what else could we add to this article to effectively make it more robust more seo friendly and more helpful to the reader by including more facts more entities more um, research-based studies that we can cite um, so entities can be people the actual researcher who's done uh, the study, but it can also be an entity such as a university. Um, it can be a year when it was published. All of that would help somebody reading this to get like, okay, these people have done their research. This goes into the EAT algorithm that Google can identify people, um, things, places, universities, and all of those things. And so this article is basically lacking a lot of that. And we're now asking Grok, hey, can you help us improve this? So it's almost like an editor or an additional researcher who can take the articles that you have um, perhaps currently and then upgrade them. But certainly if you're writing a new piece of content, you can also use this deep research um, to go out there, visit 90 pages and come back with a lot of very qualified research. And you will see here that it's beating a lot of other um, tools such as perplexity in a second here. So we set here research um, breast implant risks deeply and find important facts that we will add to this article. And so now I've given the article here and the deep research has thought for one minute and 22 seconds and impressively visited 94 different sources. So that is quite significant. Um, and I like the way that this is presented here. We can see the different um, research steps that it has taken. And you can see what it's searching for. So it's searched for incidents of breast implants, BIA, not exactly sure what that stands for. <laughs> then it's searched for incidents of breast implant illness. Um, let's see. So in terms of the searches, five more. I want to find out where it has got most of its information from. Verifying article, <clears throat> finalizing the content. <coughs> so what I would have liked to see here from Grok3 is a little bit more diversity into searching for different keywords. It looks like it has only used Let's see how many keywords has it used here. One, two, three. Now it looks like it's done a good job at planning this out and searching for a lot of different topics. Um, that was my initial concern that it has just used one or two keywords and then you would find the same information again and again. But it has gone for a quite broad um, research and that's what I would recommend for you to do when you are using this 
um, don't just do what I did and um, ask for it in one sentence. Hey, research X, Y, Z. Do your own research first, perhaps with Grok or with Perplexity, so that you know what the right questions to ask are. Basically, give me a list of as many breast implant risks as possible. And now you have a to-do list for Grok because you know it can visit 100 sources. Tell it, okay, for these 30 potential risks, go out and research each one of them, right? By upgrading your questions, you can upgrade the output that you're getting as well. So um, this is basically a note to myself that in the future, I would take more time here with the prompt. But really like the output here. Let's go in um, the output. A lot of statistics. So we can see infection rates here ranging from 1 to 35%, skin necrosis 4 to 13%. <clears throat> that was the original output. And I've heard other people criticize as well that it's not very generous with the sources. So by default, it has not told us where it's got that information from. And that's a problem, right? Google and your readers most likely want to know where does this come from? Um, are you making this up? Is this AI hallucinating? How can this be verified, right? And so that's why it's important to go the next step that I've done here, where I've asked to um, cite the sources and mention the authors, studies, universities, and doctors involved. So that goes back to the EAT, the entities that we want, and then clearly outline what facts were missing from the original article as well. So it's gone out. Um, visited another 85 sources to basically cite its own text. And now it's come up with, at least down here, a lot better content where, so at the top, it's more of a general overview, but here it now starts with the analysis. So regulatory bodies such as the FDA, that would be an entity that Google knows about. Then it's starting to talk about the meta-analysis by WHO et al, um, Department of Plastic Surgery. So now this article is absolutely brimming with entities, um, with facts and uh, with research. So this is very well done now. And all of this could be potentially checked up to make sure um, that we're giving the right information. And this would make it the work of an editor so much easier because you can now go, okay, let's check this article specifically and see if this is actually correct. And I think that's going to be a kind of trust building exercise that we have to do as humans in general with AI, because we're so used to the hallucinations. Um, it makes sense that for the next probably year or two, everybody will have to fact check what the AI is outputting, in particular for medical articles such as this one. Um, really like the tables that it has provided here. So for each potential risk, there's like an incidence rate, the risk factors, the symptoms, the treatment. I mean, how much more helpful would this article be compared to the original one, which was very short here. As we can see, this might be like five, 600 words. On a topic so broad, such as breast implant risks, I would say um, this one does not deserve to rank from a content perspective. No, this is breastcancer.org. I'm sure they have plenty of fantastic backlinks pointing to them, and that's why Google ranks them. And backlinks are also one of the strongest sources of EAT because this is another website vouching for you um, that you are giving the correct information. So I'm not surprised that they are ranking, but I somewhat wish that Google would um, build it into their algorithms to rank articles, um, well, such as this one that we have generated here, um, that actually has factual information and entities um, inbuilt. And now let's run the comparison here to what perplexity can do. So I am somewhat perplexed that I forgot to mention our sponsor Cloudways, who is a fantastic partner of this channel. And they have recently introduced the safe updates feature, which is very helpful because they are testing for you if an update to a plugin could potentially break your website. So you have to spend less time on upkeep and maintenance of your site because Cloudways is going out there checking, hey, if we upgrade this plugin, is it going to break your website or not? And then they would alert you so that you can manually do that upgrade. Um, so this increases security because you don't have to worry about out-of-date plugins anymore. And you can automate the whole process uh, with Cloudways. 
I myself have been with Cloudways for the better part of three to four years. And most of my websites are on WordPress and on WooCommerce. And for that, it's just such a time saver. If you're switching to Cloudways, just use the Cloudways Migrator plugin. It will duplicate your existing website onto the Cloudways server. You then simply switch your A record IP address on your DNS hosting and connect your domain name and you're up and running. And the support is fantastic as well. 24 seven, you get technical support, really knowledgeable. And the pricing starts from $16 per month if you're on Voucher. I like to go with DigitalOcean, um, where it starts from $14 per month because, D because DO is directly integrated with Cloudways. They're basically one business. Um, so I will leave a discount code for 25% off for the first three months in the um, comments below. So give them a try. You really have nothing to lose. They even do a three-day free trial. All right, and this would really support the channel as well as a like and subscribe. Now let's hop back into our perplexity content. So perplexity also has a deep research mode and we've given it exactly the same prompt here. And it came up with a significantly shorter answer. And I would say much less well researched, I would have to say, even though previously perplexity was the king at researching well, at least if you're not paying for ChatGPT $200 per month deep research, then ChatGPT was the king, uh, I mean perplexity. So now ChatGPT might have to step up um, their game in terms of pricing by providing lower cost because, well, I, would, I will be switching to Grok3 when it comes to deep research and I think it's worth the 40 USD or 60 AUD per month. Because what we can see here is Perplexity only visited 32 sources. And when it comes to the output, it was uh, way shorter and a lot less well-researched. So we can see here that we've got no tables um, included. Um, by default, we also had no um, entities or organizations included here. And um, the total kind of number of risk factors that we have really asked for in the beginning um, to find additional risk factors um, and important facts. Um, it's just not there here with perplexity. So again, exactly the same prompt, but very different outcomes. So I would be highly recommending Grok3 Deep Research when it comes to, well, even the pre-research for your articles before you start writing. Um, use Grok3 Deep Research for that. And then in the last step, what I would recommend to do is to just provide a list of competing articles to Grok3 and ask it to see what other facts could you be including or what kind of sentences does the competitor have that answer a potential user's question better than yourself. I could see Grok3 doing really well at that too and I think that's worth diving into in another video. But now we've got a fantastic process to get more facts into your articles than competitors have, including entities. So I hope you found this video helpful. Give Grok3 a try right now in beta completely for free. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.